More afternoon, folks. Mark here, and welcome to the sofa. Bit of a treat for me today. Finally unboxing this Ronin with Kappa bust from Spira Mirabilis. So, let's see what we've got. Well, you're not getting done in one video. Hello, series. So, why not join me in the painting table, and let's get started. Nice thing about pieces like this is how little cleanup there is to do. Of course, that also means I have to do it properly. Ugh, so boring. Only adjustment I had to make was a bit of heating and bending to get the Saya and Suka to line up just right. Didn't want a wiggly katana. Then I could wander off to the airbrush as usual for priming. A grey primer, then some pale-ish purple from the right side, and pale yellow from the left. I realise this looks pretty ridiculous, but bear with me. I want it to feel like the baby is pointing at the sunset, and this will hopefully tint everything to help with that. First things first though, he needs those soul windows painted. Because they're big enough, I can go all out. Pale grey with a little red around the edges, and dark brown irises. Then I can try to give those irises some variation with paler browns before blobbing in the pupils. This is when I start to try and age this guy up a bit, with cataracts glazed in using that same pale grey. While I was in eye mode, I gave the Kappa golden yellow eyes with big pupils to accentuate their babiness. Now it was time to age up the face to match, starting with some quick undertones. Red on the cheeks, yellow on the forehead, and purple under the chin. A few subtle veins would add translucency. Hopefully not as much as the last time I did this. Almost forgot the arm. Why do I find them so forgettable? But that got some veins too. Then I could throw some general flesh tones over that to get things going. Add some liver spots part way through. And start layering up pale wrinkles, especially on the fingers, wrist, and around the eyes.
I liked the bags under the left eye, on the right, but not the right left eye. Which reminded me to add scars, both giving him history and covering that up. Eventually, I got to the point where I wasn't sure what the skin needed next, so I switched gear and roughed in the cloth areas. Hakama seem like they're traditionally either plain or bold striped, but I didn't want that distraction at the bottom of the bust, so I went with a subtle pinstripe. Basically just black shading over the priming, and a couple of grey-brown lines. I planned to build up a smooth off-white inner jacket, which is called the Nagagi. Although, as you can tell, that went a bit sideways and ended up as a rough texture. And, of course, it wouldn't be me if I remembered the arms, so let's quickly whiz past that. Last major cloth area was the jacket, which is called a Hayori, possibly? For contrast, I was going to make this navy blue, which wasn't the easiest thing to build up over yellow, not a great surprise, really. But, I kept adding to it slowly, and after a couple of hours, decided that I liked where it had ended up. Not exactly navy blue, but who cares? With some quick dark grey over the hair, I was ready to try and finesse the skin tones some leather tones to warm it up first, a little more pink to smooth and plump the upper cheeks to follow, and some sharpening of the wrinkles as a final garnish. Still not really convinced, but I went back to the hair and started building it up properly this time. The dark initial layer would work as shadows and roots, so most of what I had to do was brighten it up. Going over the edges with paler greys broke up the outline, especially on the beard, so the hair felt less dense and some skin showed through. Pull 
Also, I really dislike top knots. The hair direction is confusing. Some shading between clumps. A few sharper highlights. and just a smidge of arm hair. After that, I quickly put some vague colours on the basket and gourd, then finished up this round by painting the kappa. I had no particular plan, so started out with some greens around the back and flesh tones on the face. Rough highlights in pale green, and some brown in the face shadows were next. The goal was to have the shell pale and muted, but still similar to the skin, so I just mixed random colours I'd already used, and worked in rings to mimic a growth pattern. And at that point, I called it for this video, and glued his scabbard back on. So what do you think? I've tried to get the basics down on most of him to get an idea how he'll look. Still plenty of time for tweaks before I go overboard on the detailing, though. You know I can't resist big cloth panels. I've just got to freehand on them. You know how to get in touch. So with that, maybe I'll see you next time.